welcome back again so we are entering into the next topic that is the GFR glomerular filtration rate now I will ask you please go through the first topic that is the functional anatomy topic first because there we have discussed the structure of filtration barrier so now we are going to discuss how the filtration occurs what are the different pressure at the level of glomerulus fine so again the schematic diagram so this is your glomerular capillary afferent and efferent arteriole and Bowman's capsule here Bowman's capsule is here okay so what is the net force for filtration so first we have to understand this concept net force for filtration right so this filtration depends on a force which is known as the starling forces what is that so whenever some blood or water is flowing in this capillary region it will have some hydrostatic pressure okay so that is pc i am denoting pc so what is p p stands for this is the hydrostatic pressure c for capillary and p for hydrostatic pressure you know that hydrostatic pressure always try to push the water into the other compartment so what this capillary hydrostatic pressure will do it will try to push the water from capillary to the Bowman's capsule similarly this Bowman's capsule will also have some water because continuous filtration is going on so again it will have some water and whenever there is water it will also have hydrostatic pressure so this is P P for hydrostatic pressure B stands for Bowman's capsule so what the hydrostatic pressure of Bowman's capsule will do it will try to push the fluid into the capillary again okay so both forces acting opposite to each other now apart from hydrostatic force there is another force which is known as pi pi is nothing but oncotic pressure or oncotic forces oncotic forces is nothing but it's a osmotic tension due to plasma proteins okay so it's a basically osmotic forces okay which is due to plasma protein so at the level of capillary suppose this is pi c oncotic pressure of capillary now you know that oncotic pressure has a tendency to drag water into the same component that means it's a dragging force hydrostatic force that's a pushing force and oncotic force it's a dragging force it will try to drag water from the other component so what this pi c will do it will try to drag water from Bowman's capsule right obviously there will be pi b also it will try to drag water from the capillary now if i ask you calculate what is the net force from the level of capillary towards the Bowman's capsule you have to calculate what is the net force from capillary towards Bowman capsule I'm calculating so I'm writing that so PC minus PB that is the net hydrostatic forces plus pi B is helping and pi C is opposing so this is the net oncotic forces all of these forces combination of all of these forces is known as the Stirling law or Stirling forces right Stirling law or Stirling forces so the Stirling law or Stirling forces is applicable in any part of the capillary in our body depending on these forces it will be determined how much water will go to the tissues or how much water will enter into the capillary again Stirling forces okay if this forces is huge towards the tissue then the tissue will have extra amount of water which is nothing but the edema you know that is a concept at the level of capillary at the level of Bowman's capsule at the level of glomerulus what is the value of all of these forces pc i'm writing the normal value of all this pc is 60 millimeter of mercury pb is 18 millimeter of mercury plus pi b what is this pi b pi b i told you that is the oncotic forces oncotic forces is what 
that is autonomic forces due to plasma protein now at the level of this bowman's capsule the plasma protein amount is negligible almost zero because plasma protein even the albumin filtration is very very minimum okay i told you in the previous discussion 8 to 10 mg per day that means that is negligible that's why for easiness we write down that oncotic force of bowman's capsule is equal to almost zero minus oncotic force of capillary is 32 millimeter of mercury so if i take the net value of from all this so this will be 10 millimeter of mercury am i clear so first question mcq that we have answered that the net force for filtration net force for filtration at the level of glomerular capillary is 10 millimeter of mercury okay 10 millimeter of mercury now i must have to say that this 10 millimeter of mercury which i have written here this is the average forces at the level of capillary that means if i ask you a question that filtration force is maximum at the level of this afferent arteriole or at the level of efferent arteriole just now i told that the average force for filtration is 10 millimeter of mercury but i am asking maximum forces at which level average i understood maximum forces at which level then you have to understand another concept what is that suppose at the level of this afferent arteriole the blood is flowing and along with blood suppose 100 molecule of proteins has reached here 100 molecule of proteins has reached here so it will have an oncotic tension now when this blood is flowing through this capillary from afferent to efferent end what is happening some amount of water will be filtered and some amount of solute will be filtered but what will happen protein is not going to filter so what will happen to the concentration of protein in the other region i can say the concentration of protein in the efferent end will be higher whenever the concentration of the protein is higher which forces will increase pi c will be higher at the level of capillary am i clear so because of the higher pi c look at pi c is a dragging force that means it will oppose the filtration of fluid so what will happen because the pi c is higher net filtration forces at the level of efferent arteriole will be lower than afferent arteriole end that's why if you read carefully you will read in books that maximum filtration force is at the level of afferent arteriole and how much that is 15 millimeter of mercury and minimum filtration forces is at the level of efferent arteriole beginning which is close to 0 millimeter of mercury and what i have written here that is the average forces throughout the glomerular capillary am i clear so maximum forces 15 and minimum forces 0 means whenever the fluid is going from afferent towards the efferent end towards the efferent end the filtration become almost zero and that should happen okay now please note down that this 10 millimeter of mercury this is the value which is given in guyton in Genome, it is written that filtration force at the level of afferent arteriole is 15 millimeter of mercury so that's not about the average forces average forces is 10 and in Genome, the value of all this this 60 18 is given differently why differently if you read carefully you will understand the value which is given in Genome is from the rat experiment not from human okay so that's why i have taken other value from guyton okay so follow this this will give you answer this is already a m's mcq which has been asked right so this is the net force of filtration now if i want to calculate the g f r if i want to calculate the glomerular filtration what i have to do i have to multiply one constant multiplied by net force of filtration 
net force for filtration right so what is this k f it's a constant now how to get the value of this constant normal jfr all of us know that this is 125 ml per minute is equal to k f multiplied by net force how much that is 10 millimeter of mercury so this k f has a value of 12.5 ml per minute per millimeter of mercury again guyton okay this has already been asked in mcq so this k a is known as filtration coefficient this is known as filtration coefficient it's a constant so obviously this filtration coefficient which is a constant depends on certain parameter what are the parameter on which this filtration coefficient depends two things number one surface area of all the glomerular capillary right so if the surface area of the capillary increases to kf will be more but rather than increase if it is decreases kf will be low and if the kf is low you can easily understand what will happen to your gfr gfr will also be low right so capillary surface area and second is capillary permeability capillary permeability right so that's why all of you know that if there is decrease in permeability of the capillary due to some disease in which there are some multiple deposition on the uh, filtration barrier then obviously the GFR will be lower down. Similarly, if there is decrease in surface area of the capillary, like for example, FS, GS, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, obviously there will be decrease in GFR because KF will be reduced. Am I clear? So this is GFR, how the GFR depends on different factor. Now I told you what is the value of normal GFR. Now, before proceeding into regulation of GFR, you also write down the normal value of renal plasma flow. Why? Because in the beginning, I told you the value of renal blood flow. That is how much? 20 to 25 percent of cardiac output that is around 1200 ml. But renal plasma flow is more important for filtration because in filtration, the cellular cell uh, molecule of the blood has no role because we know rbc wbc they are not going to be filtered so what is important for filtration plasma so that's why you are more interested in renal plasma flow during discussion of gfr so what is the normal value of this this is generally 625 to 700 ml per minute right so this is the normal value of renal plasma flow if i take a ratio of gfr upon renal plasma flow this is known as filtration fraction important for mcq filtration fraction okay so if you just put the normal value of 625 uh, upon uh, sorry 125 upon 625 or 125 upon your um, 700 ml what will you get you will get a ratio of 0 0.162 0 0.2 so this is the normal value of filtration fraction what this ratio indicate to you this indicate that gfr is 16 to 20 percentage of renal plasma flow that at a time the amount of plasma which is coming at the level of glomerulus is 700 how much plasma is filtered at a time that is only 20 percent of the total plasma flow okay that is the meaning of filtration fraction right now we are going to discuss the other part of this gfr that is what that is regulation of g a r regulation of gf fine okay so what are the things which regulate your GFR? Number one, important, auto regulation. And number two, afferent and efferent. 
arterioles resistance okay afferent and efferent arterial resistance now first we will discuss this auto regulation and then we will come here so what do you mean by auto regulation auto regulation so simple if you analyze the word auto regulation self regulation you will say but there was a mcq they asked auto regulation means constant blood pressure constant blood velocity constant blood flow okay so please remember auto regulation means constant flow of blood okay so i'm writing for your understanding purpose this is constant blood flow important 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 constant blood flow in a organ in an organ irrespective of blood pressure within a particular range okay so constant blood flow irrespective of blood pressure within a particular range okay rather than this definition we have to understand this thing what i told already okay so to understand this i am drawing one auto regulatory curve graphical representation so x axis is the blood pressure and y axis is the renal plasma flow okay renal plasma flow or gfr both are auto regulated so look at the curve look at the curve okay now i'm putting some number what is this number you have to remember this 70 millimeter of mercury and this is 180 millimeter of mercury so suppose this is a uh, g f r right so what you are finding out here or suppose this is renal plasma flow what you are finding out here ki if my blood pressure is changing from 70 millimeter of mercury to 180 millimeter of mercury then my renal plasma flow is remaining constant all the blood pressure is changing but renal plasma flow is constant this is nothing but auto regulation okay but if your blood pressure is going below 70 millimeter of mercury like for example the person is suffering from shock then obviously the renal plasma flow will decrease as well as your gfr will reduce but within this particular range of 70 